Hello, ladies on Facebook. This is Natalie Hoffman with flyingfreenow.com. I asked a question on our Facebook page today, and I was wondering if anyone had any questions. And I got a couple, and the one that I'm going to answer is this one. She asked, could you speak to healthy relating to adult children who have been alienated from you by lies of the ex? So I can relate to this question. I had um, one child who was estranged from me for two and a half years. And about a year ago, we, re we began to rebuild our relationship, which was uh, something I was very grateful for. And um, I also, when I filed for divorce, I did experience a lot of questioning from my older kids. Um, and even though we'd been separated for almost two years, that was, it was weird because I was thinking that since we'd been separated for so long that the divorce was just kind of the natural um, progression of things. And in my mind, I thought that was understandable. But kids are, kids are not in our minds and they have their own programming and their own thoughts about how things are and how life is supposed to go. And they were still very shocked and disappointed that we were getting a divorce. The other thing is that when you get a divorce, when you file for divorce, if you're the one who initiates it, you are automatically the one that people will, including your kids, will say is the, um, you're the instigator of the end of the relationship, okay? So they're not going to look and understand or try to figure out why you're filing for divorce. All they care about is that you did, you filed, and the marriage is ending because you filed. And so that's just the facts of the situation, okay? Now, um, here's, here's how I like to think about it now. The circumstance here is that you have a child, let's just say you have a child who won't talk to you. So what you make that mean is going to be very, very important for your life, mainly, but also for eventually for the life of your child and, and all of the other people around you. You could make that mean, you know, the fact that your child's not talking to you, you could make that mean that you're a bad mom. You could make that mean that they're a bad child. You could make that mean that life is horrible and unfair and it's all falling apart. You could make that mean that you'll never have a relationship with your child again. You could make that mean that they hate you. What you make that mean is going to determine how you feel in the situation. And how you feel is going to determine what you do, your actions. It's going to determine your stance when you come into that situation and when you think about that situation. So if you feel, if you believe I'm a bad mom, you're go because they're projecting that onto you, you're going to feel something like, you might feel a lot of things, but a predominant feeling that women have in that situation is they feel shame. And if you feel shame, when, we f when human beings feel shame, what do we do? We hide. We hide. We don't engage. We, um, we immediately feel like, oh, I got to cover up like Adam and Eve in the garden. I got to cover myself up and run and hide. I feel shame. And we also, another thing that we do is we defend ourselves. If we think they're a bad child, we might actually get angry at them that we feel anger. And then we're going to show up with a stance of defensive anger towards them. Here's the thing. None of that is going to be helpful. I would like to propose that what we really want to feel in any situation is what Jesus Christ feels in any situation, which is love. We want to feel love. We want to feel love for our child. And we also want to feel and we desperately need to feel love for ourselves. We have to have our own backs in this situation. And when we love ourselves and we have our own backs, that's when we are going to have the best chances of truly showing up in a loving way towards all the people in our lives that are exploding all over the place. 
Now, there will be some people and some kids who will be so angry and so upset, they'll say a lot of vile, horrible things to you into your face, or they might send you an email, or they might text you. I've experienced all of these things from people. And it's going to really, really hurt. But you have to remember that what they're telling themselves and what they're telling you are just stories in their minds about what happened. And all of the stories that they have in their minds about, about what happened are as a result of their programming in their brain. And we get our programming from all of the things that have happened to us in our lives, from all of the, of the things that we've observed happening to other people, all of the things that we were taught at home, at school, with friends, teachers, all of the things that we've seen, watched on TV, all of this stuff contributes to our brain's programming. And then that programming is what runs our lives. That's what we make all of our decisions by. So your child has a programming as well. And if they're a young adult, that programming has been in place for quite a while and has built up over the years. And th that programming is going to dictate how they view your, your choice to get a divorce or to separate, how they, view their, how they view their dad's actions and responsibilities, and then how they view their role even. So there are some adult children who actually view their role as being, I need to correct my parents. I need to correct my mom. I need to tell her what's what. I need to um, tell her that God's going to, I need to control. A lot of kids especially are very interested in controlling their environment because that makes them feel better. A lot of times they maybe grew up in a family where they had no control. If they grew up in a very patriarchal family, if we were a mom in a very patriarchal family, then we actually contributed to that kind of thinking in their lives. And I've had to own my part in that and take responsibility for that. The idea that other people can, can and should control other human beings other than themselves is a very toxic, uh, poisonous worldview. And it creates all kinds of, that's where dictatorships come from, that's where racism comes from, that's where every ism that's on this planet comes from that idea that I should control other people. And when people, when we think that and we grow up and then we become, and we come into place, places of power, we actually implement that and we control as many people as possible. That's what abusive, if you're a woman here, that's what your abusive husband did. He took power over you and he took power over the kids and he decided that he was going to be the little demigod in your family and control everything. Well, your kids grew up probably thinking that that was normal. So of course they're going to try to control you now and you are what you're doing is you're trying to come out of a controlling environment and take control of yourself and that is the key to healthy to a healthy emotional and spiritual life self control not control of others this is a challenge for us too because we need to let go of trying to control our ex-husband or our husband or soon to be ex trying to control our adult children. We can't control our adult children. Trying to control our the stories that are being spread about us. I definitely tried to do damage control. We can't do that. The damage happens anyways. And all we do is waste our time trying to, you know, pulling out our hair, trying to control what people think about us. We can't control the stories in other people's minds. So what can we control? This is what, what we want to take back control of is what we can control. And we can control our own thoughts about the situation. And that's going to actually help us feel differently depending on what those thoughts are. So if we're thinking I'm a bad parent, I'm a bad mom, then we're going to feel shame. And then we're going to show up in the world from that place. But what if we thought differently? What if we thought, what if we had a thought like, um, you know, like what I'm just telling you? My child has a belief about the situation based on his programming, and I can understand why he or she believes that. I can understand why he or she is showing up in this world in the way that they are with this attacking kind of stance towards me. I can understand that. And so I'm going to come 
to, at this situation from a place of compassion and love and patience. And I choose not to believe that this is a permanent thing. I choose to believe that this is a transition period and it's going to be very, very difficult for all of us. And I'm going to show up for myself and have compassion on myself and where I am at. And I'm going to show up for my kids and have compassion on them and where they're at. Do you see how this is coming at this from this place of strong identity in who you are as a human being? You deserve just as much respect. You deserve just as much control over your life and the ability to control your life as everyone else does. And when your kids, adult kids, trust me, they will begin to experience, have some life experience of their own where they experience other people who try to control them or where they actually try to control other people, like maybe their dad did, and, and they get kicked back from those people. And they will either go in the direction of being a controller and trying to control all the things, or they will begin to shift and go in the direction of letting go of control of their circumstances and the people and taking adult self-control of themselves. And that's what we're hoping for them. But we can't, again, we can't make that choice for them. They get to make that choice for themselves. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to give my child the space that they needed to figure things out on their own. And at first, I did reach out to them and let them know once in a while through texts or whatever that I loved them, that I supported them, that I understood, but I also did not throw myself under the bus, okay? I, I'm not gonna, I don't do that any, anymore in my life. I will admit responsibility when my behavior needs to alter, but I'm not going to throw myself under the bus or buy into lies about anything that I did or thought or said or anything about my identity. I don't do that anymore. So I'm not saying do that, all right? A lot of us, we groveled with our exes when we were married to them, or if you're still married, we were always saying, I'm so sorry, please forgive me, you know, for anything, because even just bringing up feedback to them would invite an attack. And then we'd think that we were the ones in the wrong for giving them feedback. It's not wrong to give someone feedback. It's not wrong to ask to make a request. And it's not wrong to say no to somebody, including your husband. But your husband and other peep controlling types of people will make that mean that you are being bad, that you're attacking, that you're unsupportive, that you're unbiblical, and that you're all these bad things. That doesn't mean that at all. But see, they can, they can make that mean that. That's their programming. Do you see how when you separate your, your brain from their brains, how much easier it is to be more clear about what's going on? Then you're like, yeah, like, you know, that's your perspective. You're totally welcome to have your perspective. I also have my own perspective and this is my perspective and I'm going to stick with it. Okay? I'm open to I'm open to hearing what you have to say, but I'm not going to I may or may not choose to buy into your story about what's going on here. So, um when you can do it from that place and then give them some space, then what that does is it it sets an example for them of what's actually possible in their lives as well. And and also you kind of you maybe you just need some space from them too. If they're being having some toxic behaviors towards you, that doesn't mean they're a bad person. That doesn't mean you have to write them off. But if they don't want to be around you or talk to you, then take that as an opportunity for you just to go, you know, to get some space from them and work on your own stuff. The stronger that you get, the more you have your own back. The more that you know that you are safe and completely and 100% loved by your creator, whether you are divorced, separated, or married, or remarried, or whatever your status is in this world, he loves you. Well, the more that you can rest in that, then the more that love is going to overflow out of you towards your kids. Are you going to be a perfect person? Hell no, you are not going to be a perfect person. But what you are going to be is someone who is okay with that. You're going to be okay with making mistakes. You're going to be okay with saying you're sorry when you need to. But you're also going to be okay with yourself. We don't want to live in shame. Living in shame causes us to hide and run from other people and run from relationships. 
We want to live from a place of love and give people the space. And if they don't want to spend time with us, then we need to let them go. Knowing and hoping that someday they will come, they'll circle back and they'll want to actually restart a relationship. And here's the thing. I've had people that have cut me off in anger and I have been tempted. I mean, inside my head, I've been like, I can't believe they would do that. What did I do? All I did was, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I, I honestly didn't do anything wrong other than basically be myself, okay? And I no longer apologize for that. But because I've been a safe person and haven't attacked them back the way they attacked me, they will sometimes circle back and they'll, and they'll reach out back to me again. Because, you know why? Because they know that I'm a safe person. They know I'm not going to reject them or attack them back. So that's what I would, that's my, that's what I have to offer you, I guess, when it comes to our adult children. I know I see you. I know how painful it is. I've spent many a night, like literally ugly crying over the feelings of rejection over the, I was a homeschooling mom for 20 years, poured my life, poured my prayers, poured every ounce of my energy into trying to create a life for my kids where they could thrive in an environment that was a very, very um, negative and critical and heaping shame on me on a regular basis and heaping shame on them too. And then I was part of all of that. I was like in a washing machine tumbling around with all of that and contributing to that because I didn't know any better and that was my programming as well to think that I would enable could or should enable that kind of environment and when you get out of that kind of environment you are going to get kicked back and people are going to want to shove you back in there get out stay strong love yourself God loves you and you will be able to show up in a loving way towards your older children. And you know what? Even if you're not with them, love just feels good. It feels better than hate. And I've felt both love and hate in huge ways. And love just feels better. All right, that's all I have for you today. Oh, I wanted to say one more thing. I have a workshop, a free workshop that I'm going to be doing on October 1st and October 4th. It's going to be the same workshop. You can just pick whichever time you want. You're going to be seeing some information about that coming up. I'll put a link to the sign up page as soon as it's ready. I'll put it under this video. I think it's, I think it actually is ready. So um, that you can sign up and register for that. And it's just going to be a workshop where we actually talk about how we can um, basically do this separating of ourselves from the minds of other people so that we can actually be free internally. So even if you can't get out of your relationship right now, what I really want for you is to be able to be free and have some sanity in your own brain. Okay, there may not be a lot of sanity in your environment, but let's at least get our own brains cleaned up and have some sanity there. All right, doesn't that sound good? So look for that workshop information. It's coming soon. And otherwise, until next Monday, fly free.